Well, that's the shelving all done. Time to relax. Ah, oh, crap. Look at my snacks. Much better. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now we're off Iron Man finally, back into some flash effects. Well, kinda, as this effect can really be used for a bunch of different purposes. Time for a random request. Sean Santos 0906 asked, I was wondering if you could do a teleport effect tutorial like Peekaboo in episode 12 of The Flash. Thanks in advance and stay awesome. I'll do my best with the awesomeness, Sean. In order to complete this effect, you need to shoot your actor performing the teleportation in several locations if you want them to move around in that shot. And of course, a clean plate with no bugger in it. Now guys, you got all that? Because I know it's a lot. You might want to write that down. Let's just get to work, shall we? Now guys, don't forget to stick around until the end of the episode to find out who won our 5,000 subscriber celebration green screen giveaway. That was really hard to say. Okay guys, I'm going to level with you here. This effect is very easy. I almost feel bad for dedicating a whole episode to it, but hey, even I get an easy one every now and then. So here's our shot in a comp all ready to go. I've also got our clean plate underneath our footage lying in wait, but let's turn that off for now. We're going to cover the vanishing first, and then we'll tackle bringing your actor back, because let's face it, you got to get rid of them before you can bring them back, right? Our first tip here is to head to the point on the timeline where you want your actor to vanish. We'll then hit Control shift d and delete the end part of the clip, as we'll call this our teleport point. We'll then select our footage layer, head up, grab the pen tool and draw a mask around our actor separating them from the background. You can use the roto brush tool here if you want, but I still prefer masking as it's a lot more accurate. Once you have your mask, we'll head up to composition and let's save this frame as a Photoshop still. I'm going to click here and rename mine mm, Vanish Still. That'll do. I'll then save it and render it. We'll then import that still right back in like it never left and drop it into its very own comp. From there, it's time to get a little blurry. Let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, stay up there, go up to effect, blur and sharpen and add CC Vector Blur. Time to change some stuff. First off, hit the stopwatch on a mount. We'll then move down to angle offset and set that to 83. We'll then set the ridge smoothness to 0.90. And finally, that map softness to 64.5. We'll then scrub forward eight frames on our timeline and crank that amount up to 500. Yeah, I agree. Looks like crap. But here's the genius of it. We're gonna select that vector blur effect, hit Control D and duplicate it three more times. And now let's check out a preview. Much better, eh? But we ain't done yet. Let's head up, grab another adjustment layer, and this time we'll head to Effect, Distort, and add Turbulent Displace. Let's hit the stopwatch on a mount, crank it then to zero, set the size to 23, and hit the stopwatch on Evolution. We'll then head right to the end of the comp, set the Evolution to two, and crank that amount up to 150. One more step, people, and we're all done. From there, let's head up to Layer and add a new solid. We'll then head to Effect, Noise and Grain, and add a Fractal Noise. Now let's change some settings. We'll change the Fractal Type to Dynamic Progressive, the Contrast to 120, hit the stopwatch on Brightness, and then crank it up to minus 150, set the Complexity to 8, and hit the stopwatch on Evolution. We'll then scrub to the end of the timeline, set that Evolution to 2, and crank the Brightness up to 95. From there, we'll then change the Transfer Mode on the layer to Silhouette Luma. Now let's check out a preview. As you can see, we now disperse and disappear quite nicely. Teleport complete. Our next step is to composite that teleport back into our footage comp. To do this, let's firstly turn off the mask we made in the first step and turn that background plate back on. We'll then hold shift and drop our new teleport comp in at the end of our actor clip. Now one thing we do have to do to make this seamless is to zoom in like so and trim the first frame from our vanish comp as the effect hasn't started yet. And even if your mask is super detailed, you'll still notice that one frame doesn't look right. Now with that first frame trimmed, our teleport effect starts right away and nobody's the wiser. Tee hee. As always gang, it does need a cherry on top. 
In this case, it's a slight bit of displacement over the whole shot just to emphasize that teleportation effect. So let's head up, grab a new adjustment layer, we'll then trim that layer to start when our teleport does. From there, let's jump up to effect, distort and add one more turbulent displace. We'll then change the amount to 30, hit the stopwatch, change the size to 20, hit the stopwatch on evolution, we'll then head forward a few frames past our actor disappearing, set the evolution to one and crank the amount down to zero. Once we've got all of that out of the way, we're gonna head up, grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around our actor. We'll then hit F and feather it out around 100 pixels. Now let's check out a preview. Nice, we've made our actor disappear. So how do we bring him back? Well, that's even easier. We just reverse it, follow the exact same steps we did to set up our first vanish comp. Find the point in your footage you want the actor to return, hit Ctrl Shift D, and this time we're gonna delete the front. We'll then mask our actor out, save the frame as a Photoshop still, import it back in, and drop it into its own comp. Now, since we did all of those effects on adjustment layers, we'll just copy them directly from our vanish comp and paste them right on top of our still. We'll then start from the bottom and work our way up, just like Drake. Let's select our first adjustment layer. Let's hit the stopwatch on our vector blur amount all four times to remove the animation. Let's then hit it again, only this time we'll crank the amount up to 500 on all four, Head to that 8 frame mark and crank them all down to zero. We'll then select our next adjustment layer, hit the stopwatch on our turbulent displace amount to cancel the old animation, hit it again, crank it up to 150, head to the end of the comp and crank it down to zero. Sensing a pattern here guys. Our last step here is to reverse the fractal noise animation. So let's select our solid, hit the stopwatch on brightness to cancel the old stuff, hit it again, Crank it up to 90, head to the end of the comp, and crank it down to minus 110. We now have the exact reverse of our Vanish comp, so let's composite it into our footage. Let's firstly head over to our original footage comp, turn off our mask, and then turn our background layer back on. We'll drag our new return comp into our original comp. This time around, I'm going to trim the frames off the end of the comp. And since I'm moving in the return shot, I'm going to trim a few more frames just to make it look right. But feel free to experiment with the amount of frames you trim here. I'll just check out a preview now to make sure it looks right. And we'll then finish it off with our adjustment layer containing our turbulent displays. And let's check out a preview. Dun, 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 dun. Add up all those steps and you get something like this. Whew. Well... That's the shelving all done. Time to relax. Ah, oh, crap. Look at my snacks. Much better. So that's teleporting peekaboo stuff. It's really easy, doesn't take a lot of steps, or much effort at all, really. You can use this one for a nightcrawler or an azazel effect if you want to, as they're not really that much different. Okay, guys, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's head over to the computer and find out who won the green screen. Okay guys, here we are at the computer. I've got all the entrance names straight up on this random prize generator thingy. So all I've got to do is hit enter and we'll see who won. Let's check it out. And the winner is... Leonard PFX, congratulations. Let's check out your video. Hi. This is Leo, and until you catch me, keep planning. I just want to thank everyone for entering. Mike Frudenberg and I had a great time watching all the entries, and we had a great laugh. Some of you guys did outstanding work, like really funny stuff. Now, I know some of you might be disappointed that you didn't win the green screen. I mean, that's understandable. I'd be a little bit disappointed too. But I just wanted to let you know that as a consolation, every single clip that was sent in will be featured on an upcoming film learning episode. So. There's always that. So once again, thank you so much for sending in your clips. I enjoyed them immensely, and soon enough, everyone else will get to enjoy them too. Back to you, Grant. But that's my time, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, get that subscribe button and a little click, just a little one. And for previews of upcoming episodes, hit me up on Twitter and Facebook. And until next time, when I bewitch you, 
Keep learning. <laughs>